every software team and every project will experience some sort of problem as they move through the system. These may be technical issues, issues working with other departments and interpersonal issues, staffing issues, etc. A process pattern describes a process related to a problem that is encountered during the software engineering work. It's going to identify the environment in which the problem occurs and suggest one or more solutions to the problem. Now, there is a basic template for describing these process patterns and figuring out potential solutions. The first of which is to give it a meaningful name. Okay, so what happens if, for example, someone leaves the organization? All right. The second is going to be what forces the environment for the pattern to exist. So your name might be staff turnover, and the forces might be someone got poached by another company, they chose to retire, etc. We're going to try to set the stage and the type. What type of work is associated with this? So this is now going to be a personnel problem. And then we're going to look at what task pattern was used to solve or work with that. If it's something in the software framework, we might look at a phase. So, okay, this is part of the planning issue, or this is part of the building process. So sometimes it is an overwhelming scheme. It doesn't matter when someone leaves, it's a problem. Sometimes it's getting ongoing communication when you want to verify a question that you might have with a stakeholder. So looking at to determine, is there a sequence in a framework? Is there a process or a task that's being involved? Set those up. You're going to be looking at, for example, is there some sort of initial context, some condition which applied to that? Obviously, if you're involved in building software, you know some previous things that had to occur, but maybe you're looking at an integration component with a third party. How do you run into problems when you can't get a third party to respond to you that they're providing a component that you maybe even paid for? Then you start to define and really describe the actual problem. So that problem is someone leaving might be so-and-so left the organization or you might want to be a little bit more generic. It's not that Jeff left, it's that a senior developer left or a mid-level developer and how you respond to issues like that could be different. Finally, we want to look at a resulting context. What will it be like once we put a solution in place? So for example, I've seen some companies when they work on a big project, everyone's scheduled to get a bonus at the end. And as long as you don't leave before the end, you get the bonus. That has come about because they have people leaving in the middle of a project. But people go, wait a second, if I stick around for just three more months or four more months, I could have this $10,000, $20,000 bonus. And that was a solution that they put into place. So they had to make sure that they had money set aside for those bonuses when they were done. If it's a software issue and you're realizing, oh, we're having issues with communicating this much data quick enough then we want to look at, hey, is there a related pattern, something else that we can do to make a solution? Do we need to send this much data? Do we need to improve our networking? Do we need to improve the backend tools that we're using, etc.? What types of things are going to be used and put in place so if we run into them in the future, we have a solution, we know what that solution is supposed to look like, and we have an idea of what the outcome is going to be because of that. As we run through this process, we want to put cases where we have known examples of this. As many things as you can control and avoid, the better you're going to be. So putting this process in a place and putting in variations where you see things happening, that's important. Now you've got to realize that there are some things that you cannot control. A great example of this is a company I used to work for. I talked with the IT manager one day. Didn't see him the next and didn't think much about it. I didn't work with him directly, and so he could have been somewhere else. We unfortunately got word that he was in a motorcycle accident on the way home from work. You can't control that. No one expects someone, especially as young as he was, to not be able to come back into work one day. Some things you can control, like voluntary separation, when someone says, oh, I got a job offer over here. Oh, wait a second, I get this much money? 
I think I'll stay around for three months or the next six months, and that's worth it for me. So look at those types of things, understanding what you can control and what you can't control. Figuring out good solutions to those problems that you run into that you do have some control over. This is going to be what makes software engineering so effective for you and your organization.